All right, here we are in my wood shop, and uh, well, I want to show you a few things. Uh, number one, I want to highlight a Gatekeeper Designs cage that Benjamin bought for his Turbo S. Uh, I really, really am impressed with this, and I wanted to show it to you. So, this is a six inch chop cage by Gatekeeper Designs. It's got straight intrusion bars. It's done in a matte black satin finish. The powder coat work is amazing. It looks so good in person. The camera won't even do it justice. And he just does such a good job on these cages. I really, really, really wanted you to see it. I mean, let's take a, take a look at the welds real quick. You can see he does just awesome, awesome work. So good, so much attention to detail and uh, you know, the, 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 K, the roof is powder coated the same color on the bottom too. You know, it looks really good. He's got the seat belt tabs there that'll work with the Click 6 harnesses. I just, I, I can't say enough about this cage. I mean, it looks fantastic. Uh, I was down there seeing Austin on something else and I just, I uh, brought, brought this up here for Benjamin. We're gonna put it on his buggy probably Wednesday uh, before Thanksgiving, but uh, Man, it's just really nice and it wasn't a lot of money. That's the other thing uh, Now you know that Sonny has a gatekeeper design cage and Ryan has a gatekeeper design cage and uh, What you don't know is or probably don't know is Chad also has a gatekeeper design cage So now four buggies in the group all the same guy and it's because he's such a good dude and it's so Reasonable I mean to get this kind of a quality cage and he ships anywhere in the country he is not a sponsor, he's just a friend of the channel. Man, just a good guy. Um, it wasn't a whole bunch of money. Uh, 1500 bucks all in and all done with the powder coating. And I went and picked it up. I mean, he does ship them everywhere, so shipping is obviously gonna be more. But to get this quality of a cage for 1500 bucks with the powder coat, come on. I mean, Austin charges 1250 for the cage and then gear performance coatings gets about 250 maybe 300 depending on the color combination for the powder coating and they do an awesome 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 job so i uh if you're looking for a cage for your buggy i would uh, i would definitely reach out to austin you can find him on facebook at gatekeeper design racing just i mean again not a sponsor but i just really wanted to show you guys what a great job he does um you know he's got a plasma cutter so he does a little a bit of custom touches too. I mean, it says GDR right there. If you've looked at Ryan's, his says SLR. Um, he uh, he just does a really good job. It's really quality work, and for the money, you just can't go wrong. So, I I would seriously consider if you're looking for a cage for your razor, <laughs> you give Austin a call. He'll treat you right. I mean, timing isn't that bad. I mean, in under two weeks, he pretty much has it done. And he's a one-man shop. He does great work. You don't have to worry about the quality when it's one guy doing it and his reputation's on the line. I have a lot of respect for him. I mean, he quit his job to start this fabrication business three years ago. This is all he does. He builds cages and custom bumpers and you know other razor parts. He focuses on razors and does just an amazing job at this stuff. I would seriously consider having him build a cage for me. As a matter of fact, as you'll see in a few minutes, I did. All right, everybody. I showed you Benjamin's cage. Now it's story time. So you know that I ride a 2018 Can-Am X3 XMR Turbo R, and it's been a great machine. I ride the snot out of that thing, and I'm hard on it. Um, but I do have a couple of complaints about it. Um, it's hard to work on, uh, and I like working on things. I mean, I enjoy maintaining my machine, keeping brake pads in it, changing the bushings. If it breaks, I like to fix it where it makes sense. I'm not going to do any motor work, but I mean, I got a job. I can't be out here doing that kind of stuff, but I do mind. I do like, you know, putting a lot of different A arms on, you're putting radius rods on, you know, when you look at old yeller, I've done a significant amount of improvements to that from factory. I replaced the garbage factory A arms with S3 really stout A arms. I replaced the radius rods with S3 radius rods. I put a gusset kit in, a shock tower kit in, and then I put a bunch of additional electronic stuff on it to make it mine. And I really enjoy doing it. I like that. That's a part of the sport to me. 
Well, my son enjoys riding with us. And when I had the four seat turbo Razor, he would go with us occasionally and that worked out pretty good. When I traded the XPT in on my Can-Am, Cody was basically relegated to riding a Ranger 6 crew when we would go trail riding and bring him along, and it's not a great experience. Uh, it's a street legal Ranger that I take to the garbage dump and the grocery store and off to Pigeon Forge to Dollywood. That's what we had it for, so it wasn't really intended to be a trail machine when I bought it, and it really didn't excel on the trails. 27-inch uh, street legal DOT tires, no ground clearance, plus wind rock, bad combination. So I made the decision that we were going to let it go. We decided to uh, trade it in, and I really liked the 2019 Razor, uh, the Razor Rock and Trail Edition. That's what it's called. I really liked that. Uh, they made some nice changes to it for 2019, and I decided to buy one. So I'm back in the Ranger cl or Razor Club. Uh, I like the 2019 Rock and Trail because it's got the lighted fangs, because they, add, they added lower doors, because it has the new dash and the new gauge clusters. They really did a lot to improve the overall look of it. Already has the harnesses that Ruth and I like as far as uh, click six harnesses and things like that. So I two weeks ago, I loaded the Ranger into the trailer, uh, grabbed the title out of the safe, and headed down to Athens, Tennessee to Richie Power Sports to see my buddy Tim McNutt. And I bought, oh no, yeah, I bought a Turbo S. Uh, how did that happen? How did I, how, how did I get from rock and trail to Turbo S? How did I get from secondary machine that my son's gonna ride to a new primary machine that I'm gonna ride? Couple of things. <clears throat> Thing number one. I walked in the showroom, they had a red one, and I noticed they made some changes. Uh, they started including lower doors, which is, I've, I've always thought it was ludicrous that Polaris didn't include the lower doors on a 20 plus thousand dollar machine. They updated ride command, and uh, the item that really sold me, believe it or not, <laughs> they include arched radius rods from the friggin' factory. Are you kidding me? I don't have to upgrade that yet. Down the road, if I need new ones, I can do it, but I don't have to right away. Yeah. Uh, long story short, when Tim got done, it was a little more than three thousand dollars more than the, than the 2019 Rock and Trail, and I had a Turbo S. Uh, yeah. I mean, I was going to do that math all day long. So I'm walking around the showroom with Tim, and they've got the red one there. And I'm like, ah, Sonny's got a red one. I really don't like red, but it's here. And uh, Tim said, well, I have a blue one. I'm like, sold. We walked right out back. It was inside its crate still. So I went to the bank. Uh, I got some cash. By the time I got back, they had completely assembled this. And uh, I was off to the races. So I got home and immediately called Austin. I said, hey, dude, I've got to have a new cage. So he actually created this cage for me. It's exactly like Benjamin's with a couple of minor changes. And again, I want to highlight, again, it's just great work. Here's some of the things he did for me. Uh, he used that plasma cutter to put SLR in that corner there instead of GDR. He also created some nice curved intrusion bars for me. So when we look at Benjamin's intrusion bars, you can see that they're straight. I wanted to be a little bit different. Chad has some too. And uh, Ryan and Sonny do not have intrusion bars. Theirs are just wide open. So I went with these curved ones. And then I asked him if they could match the blue on the razor and gear performance coating. Wow, just wow. Perfect, perfect match on this machine. Just absolutely perfect. He did the beadlock rings for me as well, so I'm gonna have a full matching set of wheels and tires on it as well. And I also had Austin make another change besides mounting my light bars, which he mounted my chase light and mounted my front light bar. They look really great. Uh, I had him move the cross uh, intrusion bars in the back to the headrest area. So I've got this entire trunk area. I'm gonna show you why in just a second. So. Hang tight, I'll be right back. So the reason 
that I had Austin make those changes is because I bought the super big 16 inch tall rye fab storage box and I wanted to be able to open the whole thing. So uh, he made that change for me and it's perfect. Uh, <clears throat> lots of room there. I can get a significant amount of stuff inside there. And uh, I think I'm going to be really happy with this. So unlike previous upgrades in the machines, we decided that I wasn't going to spring this to you guys on some ride video. We're going to do a little different here. I'm actually creating a series of build videos, which is something new for us. But we wanted to make sure to include you in what we're doing. So for the first time, we are, we're, I'm going to be creating some build videos, walking you through more what I'm doing, not how I'm doing it. Uh, I really don't have a desire to do how-to videos, but I'll show you the modifications that we're making to it. And in some instances, I'll give you some tips on what I did to make it work right. But it's going to be a good series of videos to actually see how I make this thing mine, get it ready for the first trip that we're going to take with it, and uh, I hope you'll like the outcome. Uh, really surprised myself. Honest to God, I drove down there to buy a second machine because I really do enjoy uh, the Can-Am on the trail. I just don't like it in the garage. But I just I had to do this. So now I'm, uh, I'm back in the club. Will... Sorry, buddy. You're not going to be able to give me a bunch of canned ham stuff anymore here, all right? Uh, and sorry about the bees last time we ran into you. That said, uh, I'm still going to drive the canned ham. It's got a full canvas enclosure. I got a defroster in there. When it's cold, you better believe I'll be in the X3. And oh, by the way, with the gearing the way that it is in this thing, when uh, Ryan schedules some kind of super technical day where we're going to be doing a lot of rock crawling, I'm probably going to be an old yeller because... With the gear reduction that thing has from the factory on 32 inch tires, it crawls amazing. Uh, you've seen the videos where we did Trail 15, Trail 38, Trail 3, Trail 40A, and Trail 39, and I didn't pull winch, I drove right up everything. The X3 really does perform. It's great on the trail. It just sucks in the garage, and I mean it. Changing the A-arms is a pain in the rear end to get the, to get the, the bushings changed. Changing the oil sucks. I mean, it makes a mess when you change the oil. Changing the brake pads, all the stupid studs that, are, that get seized in there. and it, it, I just, as much as I love it on the trail, I really hate working on it. And, you know, when I got a setup like this, when I really enjoy working on stuff, I like my time in my heated shop in the winter. Now, normally, yeah, uh, it's a CNC machine. You know, I'm normally out here building cabinets and doing other fun stuff, but... I'm, uh, I'm really going to enjoy building this this year and bringing you guys along for the ride. And you can see all the stuff I'm going to be putting in it. There's lots of boxes here. Uh, there's lots and lots of boxes. There's lots of stuff on that shelf. There's just there's a fair amount of stuff that uh, you're going to see me doing uh, to make this mine. And uh, I'm glad to do it with you. I hope you enjoy the videos and stay tuned. But uh, first and foremost... If you've got a razor and you want a custom cage, Austin doesn't sponsor us. He's just a good dude. <clears throat> Seriously, look up Gatekeeper Design Racing on Facebook. Uh, chat with him. For the money, you can't beat his cages. They look so good. And with a guy like Gear Performance doing color match work like that, I don't know why you'd go anywhere else. I mean, why, why buy a cage work cage that's going to ship to you in pieces? You've got to find somebody who can do welding and then have it powder coated when instead you could have somebody who welds like this actually build it for you and then have the perfect coloring put on it. And for 1500 bucks, I mean, 1500 bucks? Come on. Do yourself a favor. Talk to Austin. Talk to the guys over at Gear. Get what you want. Customize your buggy, make it like you want it, and uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. Thanks again, and uh, I look forward to showing you folks more.